One of my previous videos was focused on Susie Liu, and I wanted to create a follow-up video on the situation because it has continued to escalate beyond my expectations. This video will probably be my last word on the situation and Susie Liu, since there are far more important things, in my opinion, to discuss, but I wanted to put out one more video on the suspicious flags that content creators are receiving because all of this does damage the platform we're all trying to use. If you don't know my stance on everything, I think what Susie Liu is doing is awful, and I do have a previous video which you can go and watch, but as I said previously, and I will say it again, content creators should not need to censor themselves because another creator is threatening their livelihood. Susie Liu is a public figure, and public figures are allowed to be publicly criticized. Heck, I receive a lot of criticism from people and I don't throw a fit every time someone says something slightly mean about me or my content. I would have thousands of complaints against people if I did that. But YouTube videos criticizing Susie Liu are hit with a wave of privacy and closed captioning complaints. Over the last couple of weeks, the controversy surrounding reaction YouTuber Susie Liu has erupted, with several videos criticizing her past actions being removed by YouTube after being flagged. Many in the YouTube community also criticized Susie Liu for a series of tweets she posted after the videos were taken down, where she wrote that YouTube would be making changes that targets what she deems to be hate channels and this is just the beginning and that her critics should blame their content and take accountability. So on April 10th, YouTube itself became part of the ongoing controversy by rejecting a takedown appeal from YouTuber commentator John Swan on his video that did a deep dive into Susie Liu's past controversies. And they said, we apply our policies consistently, regardless of who flags content. Your video was flagged by many users before being removed. The team reviewed your appeal and confirmed that the video did violate our harassment policies. And we appreciate that you re-uploaded an edited copy of the video that complied with our policies and does not include repeated attacks based on someone else's appearance. We also looked into your concerns regarding copyright abuse and did not find any evidence of that. YouTube's response was heavily criticized, and YouTuber commentator Nicholas DiOrio pointed out that in an unusual move, YouTube had responded to John Swan without being tagged in the original tweet. This actually is pretty rare. YouTube usually only gives a response when someone is tagged. Uh, it, it, this is pretty unusual, and, you know, people are pointing it out. And now, several YouTubers are reporting that their videos criticizing Suzy Liu are being hit with privacy complaints and co closed captioning complaints. Now, I do agree with only one thing Suzy Liu has said this whole time, and that's the fact that some of these creators were making fun of her physical appearance. I actually think that it's a little bit cheap for another content creator to make fun of someone's appearance just to insult someone, but that's just my opinion, and I definitely do not think that someone should be struck down and banned because of their hot takes on the internet. It continues with, it's unclear who's filing these complaints, although YouTube's rules around privacy complaints state that the first party claims are generally required with a small list of ex um, of exceptions. Additionally, all of the privacy complaints appear to be bogus and have been made on videos fe featuring publicly available YouTube and Instagram posts. Nicholas D. Oreo had received two privacy complaints on his video. He had uh, retweeted it out and he also put it in a video and it says the first privacy complaint is for a section of the video where he shows a thumbnail from John Swan's public YouTube video that was critical of Susie Liu. The second privacy complaint is for a section of the video where he shows a clip from the same video which contains footage from a public David Hinkle YouTube video about Susie Liu. First, they're all videos about Susie Liu. 
John Swan was also hit with a privacy complaint and a co closed captioning complaint on a version of his Susie Lou video with heavy censoring that he re-uploaded. It says, Dear John Swan, this is to notify you that we have received a privacy complaint from an individual regarding your content. Then the tipster news a YouTube commentary channel, which was recently hit with a channel strike and had several of its Suzy Lou videos removed, also received a privacy complaint on one of his Suzy Lou videos. Again, it says the same exact thing. And then this privacy complaint is for a section of the video where Tipster displays one of Suzy Lou's public Instagram posts and reads the caption. Her Instagram is not privated. Anyone can go and look at it and anyone can go and talk about it. Therefore, people are able to commentate on it. If it was a private post, maybe on Patreon, Patreon that only specific people could see, or even if the Instagram account was locked, maybe she could get away with this, but this was a public Instagram post that he was narrating on. And Jeremy Hambly from the Quarterings YouTube commentary channel said that several of his videos about Suzy Lou have been hit with closed captioning complaints. And the article ends with this recent wave of privacy and closed captioning complaints combined with the takedown of several videos that are critical of Suzy Liu has amplified the attention of her past controversies and with many YouTubers in the commentary space now discussing these recent events, her flagging history, her previous temporary channel termination for copyright infringement, very ironic, and her use of copyrighted anime content. Now, she did actually put up a video that the people in this situation, like the quartering and tipster, have dissected because she made a lot of questionable statements where she said, like, YouTube randomly approached her to ask her if a channel was bothering her or making her feel uncomfortable, and they asked her for her side of the story since they were doing a major investigation, which seems like a load of bullshit, in my opinion. Maybe YouTube did actually contact her. Maybe they do actually really like her, and that is actually evidence as to why she's not being kicked off of the platform when she is partaking in copyright infringement. But if YouTube thought some creator was this giant harasser, and they had evidence, why? I don't think that they would be asking multiple creators for their side of the story. I think that they would just ban him right away if they had all of this evidence, but unless YouTube takes action against her or bans a creator because of her complaints, I think that I will just leave the situation alone at this point. I'm sure that you all know you all can clearly tell what my opinion uh, is of her on this situation, but if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel, and of course, if you did not, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.